Hello, I'm Andras Polirakis. I'm the technical coordinator of ZRNet uh, Nog. ZRNet is the Greek Research uh, and Educational uh, Technology Network. Uh, the goal of which is to provide connectivity for uh, the Greek universities, research uh, institutions, or schools, uh, etc. So uh, you can see our network in the picture on the, the corner. Uh, we have um, a point of presence in around uh, 70 cities, and we plan to expand it uh, to 100 within the next year. Uh, in order to connect uh, all the cities, we have uh, uh, a network of uh, dark fiber, lead uh, dark fiber. And on top of uh, this network, we have uh, uh, built our DWDM, DWDM uh, uh, network. Uh, this network is built to, is uh, lit with uh, mainly with Alcatel equipment. Uh, some spans are uh, some spans we are using uh, adverts uh, for uh, uh, the routing. We use uh, we have uh, two junipers, uh, one RT sixteen hundred and the one MX nine sixty, which are our border routers, and uh, about ten uh, GSRs, Cisco. Uh, which are older, and uh, we plan to withdraw them within the next uh, uh, month or year. And we also have a few more uh, uh, Cisco 7200, 7300 in secondary positions. Uh, with regard to switching equipment, um, we have uh, a diversity of uh, vendors in our network. Uh, we have a lot of um, uh, these, uh, these uh, switches are used. Uh, either as aggregation switches or RCP switches or even in, the, in our data centers. So we have a lot of uh, 3750, 3970 Cisco's, Juniper X4200, uh, Extreme uh, X450A uh, uh, or uh, X350. Uh, and also we have a uh, Cisco 6500 uh, in one of our data centers. GeoNet, uh, apart from uh, connectivity networking services, also provides computing services. So for these reasons, we have uh, uh, <coughs> recently uh, bought two storage devices. One is uh, NetApp IBM, and uh, the other one is uh, EMC Celera. Uh, with a combined capacity, raw capacity of uh, around 450 uh, terabytes. Uh, with regard to our computing equipment, of course we have a lot of uh, servers, but uh, now we're uh, um, uh, turning into virtualization, so we're moving uh, hardware into virtual machine. So initially we bought uh, 12 uh, Blade servers, HP Blade servers, and uh, then uh, we filled up a rack with 31 new servers, and we created a cluster there with a virtual machine. And uh, within the next uh, couple of months, we will uh, expand uh, this cluster into uh, 20 more uh, racks. So we have a lot of computing and storage capacity. Uh, with regard to services, uh, first of all, we have uh, our traditional customers, which are the universities, research, research institutions, uh, etc. So uh, the services that you see here are most of, more or less what you said before. Uh, we give, uh, we assign address space, we give connectivity, before v 6 Unicast, Multicast, VPN, secondary DNS, backup and mix, news, NDP, do, do ROM, conferencing, voice, you see. Uh, some more recent services is uh, we have uh, created a federation, uh, an AAI federation, Cibole, and um, since uh, September, uh, all universities participate in this uh, federation, so it's a really powerful federa federation. Uh, and through this federation, we're able to reach our uh, end users, which are the uh, um, actual students and faculty. Uh, we also give a set server certificate to our uh, NOx, and also we have a, um, a virtual private server service, uh, again for uh, the NOx of uh, the universities. But we plan to extend it uh, so that um, even um, other facilities uh, the university can, uh, uh, can um, host uh, services there. Uh, as I said before, the last uh, few years we have started uh, reaching the actual end users. Uh, the first step was uh, the student DSL uh, service that we give to some uh, 45,000 students. Uh, we do not run uh, the access equipment, the plums, but 
but we terminate the LTCP and CVP, and we give internet connectivity with the IP address from uh, the, the range of their university. We also have a storage service for the students, about uh, 50 gigs, if I remember correctly, per user. Uh, we give a personal certificate, and uh, soon we plan to give a cloud service, so it's, uh, each student will be able to have uh, a couple of virtual machines to play around. Of course, we run uh, some uh, other uh, general uh, good, uh, some service for the general good, like uh, recursive DNS, public, and uh, an AS uh, 112 uh, node, a K-root uh, instance. Uh, we host a uh, .gr uh, name server, 64, etc. And uh, last but not least, we we run the Greek Internet Exchange in Athens. So, with regard to tools, uh, there is a lot uh, a lot of tools that we use. Obviously, most of them you uh, most of them have been mentioned already. This is a small uh, indicative at least. Uh, what is the most important here is that uh, uh, we much prefer open source tools, or at least open tools, because we want to be able to integrate these tools with uh, our database. We have a database that we call uh, GRNSDB. Uh, we have a lot of uh, scripts that uh, populate this uh, with uh, our topology, uh, the services, uh, and all this information. We, we, we populate some of these uh, data manually, for example, contracts of the, of the fibers. And uh, on top of this uh, database, we, we are able to run a lot of uh, a lot of uh, applications that are integrated, either uh, open source applications that we configure to run with our database, or uh, uh, tools that we develop, like our ticketing system, uh, a network visualization uh, map, a host master application, etc. Probably I could. So this is, uh, this is an example of, uh, of one of our tools. This is uh, the visualization of uh, our database. So this is a map of uh, Greece, obviously. So you can see, for example, here, this is uh, the point of uh, presence. You can click in it. Probably can click in a city. And then you can see the points of presence within the city, uh, in the universities or the, the or other buildings. I will have several layers. For example, you can see how is the optical network. This is information taken from the contacts that we have uh, uh, on our database. Or you can see the topology, which can be layer three. Or uh, Layer 2 and layer 3. You can see a marked disk here, another information. Everything is, uh, is integrated. Uh, this is a traffic map. Uh, so we have a lot of, uh, we have done a lot of work there. So with regard to our structure, uh, we have an in-house NOC uh, uh, for the last two and a half years. Uh, the NOC, um, uh, there are 14 people uh, in, uh, in the NOC. Uh, we have um, uh, the head of NOC, which is Yanis uh, Mitsos. Some of them know, that, know it. Some of you know him. And the technical coordinator, who is me. And then we have some teams, uh, optical, routing, servers, developer. Uh, Etc. Uh, we operate uh, 11 uh, hours daily, and then officially we're on call 24/7. Uh, uh, and we outsource our uh, help desk and call center, call centers actually. Uh, and they work 12 hours per day, and uh, 
during eight, eight hours during the weekend. And also we have some other um, uh, functions of, of the NOS for cybersecurity, it is here. Um, I said before, generally we, we are in front of open source tools and we <laughs> tend to integrate every, as much as we can with our uh, uh, database. So as I said before, our uh, traditional uh, users are the universities uh, and the other uh, research institutions, but now <coughs> we are trying to reach the actual end users. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any strict SLA right now. Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, we do not charge our customers, so there's no ma no money involved anyway. Uh, but we think that it is useful to have uh, SLA, so it is something that we are trying to to have uh, within the next uh, years. Uh, in order to keep track of uh, communicate and keep track of the users, we we'll use uh, our ticketing system, which is custom. And actually, it's pretty old, and we're trying to figure out what we will do with it. And uh, that, and uh, some uh, contacts in the database as that. Interesting. So within our NOC, uh, again, we use, we use the same ticketing uh, in order to make sure that we do not forget <coughs> anything. And uh, as we are not a very big team, of course, we use a lot of uh, uh, verbal communication, email, uh, Jabber, etc. Uh, with uh, our customers, we communicate through ticketing, uh, through our ticketing system and the emails, or they can call our uh, help desk. In some rare situations, even the NOC can uh, speak directly to the end uh, users. Of course, this is true for the end users that are uh, universities, because as I said, now we're attending to the actual end user, which are thousands of students, and this doesn't scale. So we're trying to see uh, what we'll do with uh, this. Um, in some cases, we have set up uh, uh, extra call center for a specific uh, application. Uh, with regard to documentation, um, of course, we need to document a lot of things. And of course, we do not document as much as we would like. But we have uh, topologies, procedures, policies, conducts, uh, a lot of uh, stuff. Mainly this information is on the wiki or uh, on the tools in our DRNet DB that I mentioned. Uh, we try to produce as much uh, automated documentation as we can. For example, uh, the topology of the network, uh, the virtual machines that are run on the servers. Whatever we can, we, uh, we produce it uh, automatically. Um, we do not have too many, too many documents to share, and unfortunately, whatever we have is, is in Greek. Mm -hmm. So, okay. <coughs> we have some guides, for example, for, for BDP. You can still use the command, see the command, which are, for example, Cisco, but the text, unfortunately, is in Greek. So that's it. Any questions? You were saying yes. that you're the technical coordinator, and yet it's the head of the yeah. Well, uh, Yanis is my boss. Okay, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. Um, so uh, my role there is uh, to have uh, an overview of the more technical stuff. Uh, Yanis has uh, um, his role is to have uh, an, over, an overall view of uh, the operation of the NOC and. Uh, and uh, also the administrative tasks and the uh, politics, probably. Okay. What I forgot to say is that um, I, our NOC is uh, very much uh, involved, uh, apart from the daily operation, with the design of our network. Uh, we do all the short-term design, and uh, we are very much involved with the long-term design because in uh, GRNet there are some other technical people, but. Um, <coughs> We are probably the most technical team, so um, yeah, there are no in in other uh, in other companies there might be uh, another team that does the design and not the NOC. But uh, in our case, it is not uh, exactly true that we are designing the network, but uh, we participate very very actively. Yes. Can I ask a question which is not related to NOC, but uh, you mentioned that you run 64 
four relays. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how much traffic is there on this? Um, I need to have a look. I need to have a look to see if we have a diagram. Probably we do, but uh, I'm not sure. I can have a look and send an email to the list. Thank, yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, you said it has uh, four teams, if I remember well. Servers, uh, yeah. networks. All these teams are within the NOx. Yeah. And uh, all the problems on, the, for example, mm -hmm. AI infrastructure are also resolved in NOx. Yes. And the help desk is outsourced, and they know who to call when to ring the NOx. Well, uh, the help desk is a uh, call center, and help desk is uh, five or six people. So we know them by their first names and, uh, and, the, and the other way around. Uh, we do have uh, some, uh, uh, the official uh, way for communication is that uh, we have uh, a mailing list that uh, the tickets uh, <coughs> are sent. So they do not need to know who belongs to each team, right? And there are also some phone numbers that are uh, that ring, uh, you know, in the members of a specific team. So uh, they can contact the team. Of course, in practice, they know the actual oh, person, yeah. but, uh, yes. Yes, uh, does it, uh, this outsource the team have access to your equipment, maybe even write a spec, or they're just serving as help desk and... Sorry, what, what is the question? If they have access to the, to the equipment? Yes, yes. Um, well, uh, yes, they do have access to the equipment, uh, read access only. Um, they have, um, that's not absolutely true, in some cases uh, for some terminal servers or uh, uh, power management, power um, uh, management, they can ha they have uh, access to actually reboot something or, uh, but generally they have, uh, they do not have uh, a lot of access, they have read access so that they can see things and uh, they're supposed to be doing the first level troubleshooting which is something that they, they were doing in the past. Um, <coughs> and now the network has grown too much and suddenly, and we have a lot of vendors and they're not able to do it so well. And uh, they're not able to do it at all in the services that we run uh, on, on top of the network. So um, one of our goals is uh, to see how we'll uh, manage to have, uh, to involve uh, these people again and uh, make them uh, actually do the first level troubleshooting for all services. And actually, another thing that uh, they were doing in the past and uh, we want to do again is uh, we want someone to be able to help uh, our customers at the university because uh, the NOx, uh, we have seen that they are underpopulated and they do not have the manpower to do the uh, even basic configurations in uh, some time. So we need our help them to be able to help them uh, set up something within their own network. And then I have another question. I know you have one rack of servers, but uh, soon you expect 21 racks of servers. What happens? So well, uh, I mentioned it uh, very quickly. We plan to give a VPN, uh, um, a cloud service to the, to the students, so to all students. Uh, so the idea is that uh, we have uh, 20 racks with uh, computing and storage equipment. This is all uh, one U servers uh, with uh, um, not, 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 uh, not specialized equipment like uh, storage, device, storage uh, appliance or something like this. Just a regular uh, one U or two U servers. And uh, we plan to, to give virtual machine to all students. Uh, this is a cloud-like service, and also give a VPS service to, uh, to the universities in order to be able to host the infrastructure in our network. So this is, uh, uh, this is why we expand so big. Okay, thank you very thank much. You very much. <laughs>